This is the Music Halls of Fame podcast. This week we honor the year in music for 2006 along with a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame class of 2006. We also look at the case for putting Sonny and Cher into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Plus, our Spotlight Hall of Fame is the Aria Music Hall of Fame in Melbourne, Australia. Before we get going with the podcast, like everyone tells you, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll know when these podcast episodes drop, which is usually every Thursday. Now, on to this week's episode. The year was 2006. In music, iTunes had its one billionth download after starting only a few years earlier. After being on air for 42 years, the weekly edition of the British music show Top of the Pop stopped airing on television. Spotify was founded, changing music a decade later. Google bought YouTube for $1.65 billion, which somehow seems like a bargain now. Opera great Luciano Pavarotti performed for the final time when he sang at the Winter Olympics in Italy. David Bowie performed for the final time as well when he sang three songs at a charity concert in New York City. The Cirque du Soleil Beatles Love Show opened in Las Vegas. 2006 was also the year that artists like Lily Allen, Daughtry, and Taylor Swift debuted. The big pop culture event of 2006, though, was the success of the Disney Channel's High School Musical, which made stars out of its actors, broke television viewing records, and spawned way too many sequels to count. Bands that formed in 2006 included Beirut, The Bingo Players, Bon Iver, Daughtry, Black Veil Brides, Haim, Noah and the Whale, Vampire Weekend, Lady Antebellum, now known as Lady A, Pierce the Veil, LMFAO, The Glitch Mob, and Cage the Elephant. Bands that either broke up until their inevitable reunions or announced their hiatus included 3LW, Atomic Kitten, Biohazard, Bow Wow Wow, The Cardigans, Destiny's Child, Dishwalla, Fusebox, Cumbia Kings, NRG. Protocol, System of a Down, Black Sabbath, The Fugees, and Fear Factory. The police reunited for the first time since their breakup in the mid-1980s. Take that also reunited, but without Robbie Williams, who rejoined a decade later. The High School Musical soundtrack was the biggest album of the year. Rounding out the top 10 albums were Justin Timberlake, Nelly Furtado, The Red Hot Chili Peppers, Carrie Underwood, Pink, Beyonce, The Beatles with the Cirque du Soleil love soundtrack, Daughtry, and Taylor Swift. Other albums that were critical darlings that year included those by Amy Winehouse, Muse, My Chemical Romance, and Arctic Monkeys. Daniel Powder's song, Bad Day, which was American Idol's loser send-off song at a time, was the biggest selling single in America. Other big singles were Sean Paul's Temperature, Nelly Furtado and Timbaland's Promiscuous, James Blunt's You're Beautiful, Shakira and Wyclef Jean's Hips Don't Lie, Natasha Bedingfield's Unwritten, Gnarls Barkley's Crazy, Chameleon Air and Crazy Bones Ridin, Justin Timberlake and Timberland's Sexy Back, and Beyonce and Slim Thug's Check On It. In country music, the big stories all seem to be about arrests and divorces. Hank Williams Jr. was arrested for assaulting a teenage waitress, for instance. Willie Nelson was arrested for drug possession. No shocker there. Lynn Anderson was arrested for drunk driving. Sarah Evans divorced her husband after finding out he was having an affair with the family's nanny. Always a classy move. There was one piece of good news, though. Keith Urban married actress Nicole Kidman. Some of the big albums of the year in country music were released by Keith Urban, George Strait, Kelly Pickler, The Dixie Chicks, now known as The Chicks, Taylor Swift, Alan Jackson, Kenny Chesney, Dirks Bentley, Johnny Cash, and Rascal Flatts. 
George Strait passed Conway Twitty for the most number one songs on the Billboard Hot Country Singles Chart when he got his 41st chart topper. George would end his career with 44 number one songs on that chart. As far as big country songs of the year, they included Carrie Underwood's Before He Cheats, George Strait's Give It Away, The Wreckers Leave the Pieces, Rascal Flatt's My Wish, Kenny Chesney's Summertime, Sugarland's Want To, Bon Jovi and Jennifer Nettles' Who Says You Can't Go Home, Dirks Bentley's Every Mile of Memory, Brad Paisley and Dolly Parton's When I Get Where I'm Going, and Josh Turner's Your Man. In hip-hop, the biggest albums were Jay-Z's Kingdom Come, T.I.'s King, The Game's Doctor's Advocate, Nas's Hip-Hop is Dead, Young Jeezy's The Inspiration, Shady Records' Eminem Presents The Re-Up, Ludacris's Release Therapy, Snoop Dogg's The Blue Carpet Treatment, Bow Wow's The Price of Fame, and Busta Rhymes' The Big Bang. The biggest hip-hop singles included Chameleon Air's Ridin', Nelly's Grills, T.I.'s What You Know, Fort Minor's Where'd You Go, LL Cool J and Jennifer Lopez's Control Myself, Eminem's Shake That, Jules Santana's There It Go, Bubba Sparks's Ms. New Booty, Jay-Z's Show Me What You Got, and Young Dro's Shoulder Lean. In dance music, the label Head Candy was bought by Ministry of Sound. Calvin Harris built up his fan base on MySpace and began his career. The Hi-Fi Music Festival started. Daft Punk used their famed Pyramid stage for the very first time in the concert. The top 10 DJs, according to DJ Mag's Top 100 DJs poll, were Paul Van Dyke, Armin Van Buren, Tiesto, Christopher Lawrence, DJ Dan, Ferry Corsten, Sasha, John Digweed, Above and Beyond, and Deep Dish. Big dance albums included Faithless's To All New Arrivals, Basement Jax's Crazy Itch Radio and Scream self-titled album. Big dance songs for the year included Eric Pritz's Proper Education, Armin Van Helden's My My My, Justice's We Are Your Friends, Ferry Corsten's Fire, Royk Sops, What Else Is There? David Guetta's Love Don't Let Me Go, Cass Fox's Touch Me, Freestyler's Pain Killer, Chris Lake's Changes, and Paul Oakenfold and the late Brittany Murphy's song Faster Kill Pussycat. The top Latin artists of 2006 included Daddy Yankee, Wizen and Yandel, Don Omar, RBD, Mana, Shakira, Juanes, RKM and Ken Y, Mariano Barba, Tito El Bambino, and Aventura. Musicals or revivals of musicals that were popular that year included Chaplin, A Chorus Line, Le Miserable, High Fidelity, Mary Poppins, Three Penny Opera, and Tarzan. Musical films that opened that year included Dream Girls, Happy Feet, and Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. It's actually a really good movie. Famous artists who passed away in 2006 included James Brown on Christmas Day, no less. Billy Preston, Lou Rawls, Gene Pitney, Buck Owens, Bismillah Khan, Raj Kumar, rappers Jay Dilla and Proof, Gerald Levert, Wilson Pickett, Boz Burl of King Crimson, Robert Lockwood Jr., June Pointer of the Pointer Sisters, reggae singer Desmond Decker, Clades Charles Smith of Cool and the Gang, Gene McFadden of McFadden and Whitehead, opera singer Robert McFerrin, singers Gloria Jones, Ruth Brown, Cindy Walker, Rocio Gerardo, and Rocio Dercal, Atlantic Records co-founder Ahmet Erdogan, Freddie Fender, Sandy West of The Runaways, Mark Spoon of Jam and Spoon, and Sid Barrett of Pink Floyd. 
At award ceremonies for the music of 2006, the Dixie Chicks, now known as the Chicks, won Album, Record, and Song of the Year at the Grammy Awards, while Carrie Underwood won Best New Artist. Panic at the Disco won Video of the Year for I Write Sins, Not Tragedies at the MTV Video Music Awards. At the American Music Awards, Rascal Flatt won Artist of the Year. At the Billboard Music Awards, Chris Brown won Artist of the Year. Jennifer Hudson won Entertainer of the Year at the Soul Train Music Awards. Bon Jovi, Carrie Underwood, Shakira, Kenny Chesney, Chameleon Air, and Nickelback won the music categories at the People's Choice Awards. At the Eurovision Singing Contest, which was held in Athens, France, Lordi from Finland won for the song Hard Rock Hallelujah. Kenny Chesney won Entertainer of the Year at the Country Music Association Awards, and he also won Entertainer of the Year at the Academy of Country Music Awards. The Arctic Monkeys won Best British Album for Whatever People Say I Am, That's What I'm Not, and Take That won Best Song for Patience at the Brit Awards. Nelly Furtado won Best Album for Loose, while Nelly Furtado and Timbaland won Best Song for Promiscuous, and Nelly Furtado won Artist of the Year, all of that at the Juno Awards. Bernard Fanning won Album of the Year for TN Sympathy, and Eskimo Joe won Single of the Year for Black Fingernails Red Wine at the Aria Music Awards. At the Tony Awards, Spring Awakening won Best Musical, and Company won Best Revival of a Musical. The Pulitzer Prize for Music was won by Yehudi Weiner for Piano Concerto Chiavi in Mano. Musically at the Academy Awards, Melissa Etheridge won Best Original Film Song for I Need to Wake Up from the movie An Inconvenient Truth, that's the Al Gore climate change movie, and the score for the movie Babel won Best Original Film Score. The Arctic Monkeys won the Mercury Prize for the album for Whatever People Say I Am, That's What I'm Not. And the first Canadian Polaris Prize was given to Final Fantasy for their album, He Poos Clouds. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony took place on March 13th at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City. At the ceremony, as one would expect, the Sex Pistols didn't even bother to show up. Instead, they sent a letter where they insulted the hall by calling it, among other things, quote, a urine stain, end quote. Typical sex pistols, I'd say. Black Sabbath were there, but they didn't perform. Herb Albert and Jerry Moss, who are the heads of A&M Records, were inducted into the Non-Performer Lifetime Achievement Award category. They were the last people to be inducted into that category. And in the Performers category, the Hall inducted Black Sabbath, the Sex Pistols, Leonard Skinner, Miles Davis, and this next group. Blondie was one of the bands to come out of New York's East Village punk rock new wave scene in the mid-1970s, along with the Ramones, Patti Smith, Iggy Pop, and the Talking Heads. Lead singer Debbie Harry and guitarist Chris Stein met when they were in the band The Stilettos. After a while, they left the band, became a couple, and formed the band Blondie, playing clubs like the famous CBGBs in the East Village. They originally released their debut album on one label, but it went nowhere. They then ended up releasing it in England on Chrysalis Records in 1977. Their first success didn't happen in America or England, by the way, but in Australia when a music video program accidentally played their music video for the song In the Flesh. That happy little accident led to the song becoming a big hit there. In 1978, they released their second album, Plastic Letters, which gave them a following in the underground music scene. In 1979, the group decided that they wanted to expand their music. The result of that expanding was their breakthrough third album, Parallel Lines. The song Heart of Glass from the album Parallel Lines was originally written as a demo by Debbie Harry and Chris Stein back in 1975. It always had a funky beat, and since the band was more of a rock-slash-new wave band, the song was always considered by them to be the disco song. 
It was originally an American disco song. However, in an interview, Debbie even stated that it was given more of a European electro disco style because of her love of Euro dance music. Specifically, disco producer extraordinaire Mr. Giorgio Moroder. They were also influenced by the German electro pioneers Kraftwerk. The song was recorded at the famous Record Plant Recording Studio in New York City in June of 1978 and became the third single released off their album Parallel Lines in January 1979. The song was number one in eight different countries, including America, and on Billboard's dance chart, the song hit number seven. Ironically, the places where the song wasn't a big hit were the big discos like Studio 54. Also, the group caught a lot of heat for the song because some people thought that they had sold out for a more popular sound after claiming a stake as the head of New York's new wave scene back at that point. What people didn't realize is that throughout their career, Blondie always mixed in different types of music. They went Caribbean style for the song The Tide is High and disco with rap thrown in for the song Rapture. During their gigs, they would throw in disco and R&B songs into their set, so putting out a disco song was not completely out of character for the band. Heart of Glass actually had two effects. The first was that it brought the band to the mainstream, which led to more mainstream hits like the aforementioned Rapture, The Tide is High, and also the song Call Me. The second effect was that once they made it big doing a dance song, other rock groups started doing dance songs, which led to the whole dance rock movement in the very early 80s. Now, let us talk about the importance of their song Rapture for a minute. In 1980, Blondie were recording their new album. They decided that they would stretch their musical boundaries on this one after a few years of being one of the breakout groups of the punk scene in New York. They experimented on this new album with jazz, blues, reggae, funk, disco, and rap. The album that came out of it was Auto American, which was recorded over two months in Los Angeles, California. There were only two songs that were released from it. The first was a cover of the 1967 reggae song, The Tide is High. That song hit number one on the pop charts on January 31st, 1981. The second song release was a mixture of funk and disco and had lead singer Debbie Harry doing a rap about the man from Mars. The rap also name-checked Fab Five Freddy, who was a hip-hop rapper pioneer and who was the very first host of the TV hip-hop show Yo! MTV Raps back in the 80s. And it also name-checked DJ Grandmaster Flash. The music video for Rapture is almost as historic as the song. The dancer in the white suit was dancer and choreographer William Barnes. Graffiti artist Lee Quinones made a cameo appearance along with Fab Five Freddy. Grandmaster Flash was supposed to be the DJ in the video, but he couldn't make the video shoot. He was replaced by artist Jean-Michel Basquiat. The video became the first rap video ever played on MTV. The song was released on January 12, 1981. On March 28, 1981, the song became the first song with a rap in it to hit number one on the pop charts. The band recorded one more album before breaking up in 1982 due to the usual creative tensions, band financial problems, and band member drug use, of course. Chris also developed a life-threatening disease. Debbie helped to take care of him until he got better. However, those financial problems began to tear apart their relationship. They sold their five-story mansion in order to pay off the band's bills, and the couple broke up. Debbie and Chris did remain friends, with Chris helping out on Debbie's various music projects. Blondie got back together in the middle of 1997 and recorded five more albums and they still go out on tour to this day. In fact, they played at this past year's Coachella Music Festival, where they brought out fellow Rock and Roll Hall of Fame member Nile Rodgers on stage to perform with them on the song Rapture. During their career, Blondie had 11 studio albums. Of those, two went to the top 10 in America. They also had 38 singles. Out of those, eight went top 40, with four of those hitting number one. Call Me, Heart of Glass, Rapture, and The Tide is High. Ironically, 
even though they were a punk slash new wave band, they actually had better success on the dance charts in America, with 12 songs hitting the top 40. They were nominated for two Grammy Awards, one for Best Rock Performance by a duo or group with vocals for Call Me, and one for Video of the Year for Eat to the Beat. They were also nominated for two Juno Awards, winning one in 1980 for Heart of Glass. Heart of Glass was also inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame in 2016, while the group was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2006. During the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony, Debbie Harry refused to let Frank Infante and Nigel Harrison perform with the group on stage. Such were the bad feelings that the band's original breakup left. Presented for induction by Shirley Manson of the group Garbage, Debbie Harry, Clem Burke, Jimmy Destry, Nigel Harrison, Frank Infante, Chris Stein, and Gary Valentine. Blondie, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, class of 2006. And, as always, we have put a selection of their greatest hits on our podcast playlist, the link of which is in the show notes. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happened in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast drops every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast from, as does our Music History Today podcast, which goes over the daily events in music history. The Music History Today podcast drops daily, including weekends, on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. In a previous episode, we looked at the case for putting Cher into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Spoiler alert, she deserves to be inducted. This week, we're going to look at her partnership with her husband, Sonny Bono, to see if the duo Sonny and Cher belong in the hall. As always, to the tale of the tape we go. Sonny and Cher released five studio albums, two live albums, one soundtrack album, and eight compilation albums. Of those, five went to the top 40 on the American charts with one album, 1965's Look at Us, going to the top 10. Number two, to be precise. They also released 23 singles. Of those... 11 went to the top 40 on the American charts, including 7 going top 10, including 2 of those 7 going to number 1, 1965's I Got You, Babe, and 1971's All I Ever Need Is You. The duo received two Grammy Award nominations in 1966 and in 1972. Rolling Stone magazine has them at number 18 on their greatest duos of all time list, and they've sold over 40 million records worldwide as a duo. One critic said that the duo were, quote, part of the leading exponents of the rock folk message type of song, a hybrid combining the beat and instrumentation of rock music with folk lyrics and often lyrics of protest, end quote. Sonny and Cher also have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Now, while their music was popular in the mid-1960s, at least until psychedelic rock took over, they found a lot of success on television as the TV variety show trend took hold in the 1970s. Cher, of course, then went on to have an amazing solo career that actually started before the duo broke up, in fact, long before the duo broke up, while Sonny instead went into politics until his death in a skiing accident on January 5, 1998. As far as the duo's worthiness for induction, I'm a little torn. For people of a certain age, as they like to say, they're remembered not for their music, but for the Sonny and Cher TV variety show, which doesn't actually make you hall-worthy, unless it's maybe the Television Hall of Fame. Uh, 
Plus, I think that some people are lumping in Cher's solo career with the duo Sonny and Cher, since Cher is definitely worthy of being in the hall and had massive hits throughout her entire career, including recently with her last Christmas song. As far as people being influenced by the duo, I think more people are actually more influenced by Cher the solo artist than Sonny and Cher the duo. On the other hand, And the Beat Goes On and I Got You Babe are iconic songs, so maybe I'm gauging this one wrong. I don't know. I'll ask you. Are Sonny and Cher actually worthy as a duo, not Cher singularly, but as a duo of being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I've put their music onto this week's podcast playlist so you can decide for yourself. The link, as I always say, is in the show notes. The Arts Center of Melbourne is a performing arts complex in the Melbourne Arts Precinct in Southbank, which is a suburb of Melbourne in Victoria, Australia. The center was constructed starting in 1973 and completed in 1984 when it fully opened. The center has a bunch of theaters and galleries and is noted for having not only the usual highbrow concerts and ballets from classical and jazz artists, but also from having roller skating, a circus, and a movie theater with it. In the complex lies an exhibit for the ARIA Hall of Fame. ARIA, which stands for the Australian Recording Industry Association, is the Australian lobbying group for their music industry. They are the ones who put on the ARIA Music Awards, which is their version of the Grammy Awards. They also induct people into their Music Hall of Fame, simply called the ARIA Hall of Fame because, you know what, sometimes a simple name is simply a good name. The induction started in 1988 and have been going on ever since, except for the year 2000 when no one was inducted for whatever reason that was. The number of annual inductees varies. For the last few years, it seems that only one act per year has been inducted. Go to artcentermelbourne.com.au for information on when the organization does their yearly exhibit and what times the operations are. And, of course, we throw that link, since it's a long one, in the show notes for you. This week, we are going to turn our attention to an artist who was inducted into the ARIA Hall of Fame and then, in a very rare move, was thrown out of the Hall of Fame. Ralph Harris is a singer-songwriter and all-around entertainer. He was born in 1930 in Perth, Australia. He started out actually as a painter, having painted since childhood. Ralph moved to London, England in 1952 to go to the City and Guilds of London Art School. He got a job on BBC television drawing cartoons for children's shows called Jigsaw and Whirligig. He also worked on the ITV network. In 1959, he moved back to Perth and worked on Australian television where he had both a children's show and a variety show. While doing the shows, he recorded a novelty song called Timey Kangaroo Downsport. Unexpectedly, the remake of the song became a worldwide top ten hit. It even hit number three in America in 1960. We'll put this into the show notes as well so you can hear the song. The four musicians on the song were offered 10% of the royalties when they recorded the song. They decided to go with a seven-pound payout because they didn't even think the song would be popular. After all, it was a novelty song. As it turns out, the seven-pound payout was not exactly the wisest business decision ever, as the song made millions. There was some controversy with the song, as it uses the word abos, which is a racial slur for Aboriginal people, something Harris apologized for later in life. He would eventually apologize for an awful lot of things, as you will find out soon enough. From the 1960s to the first decade of this century, Ralph was one of the most popular entertainers in Australia. 
He toured with his paintings, had more popular variety shows like the Ralph Harris Show, and had hit records like Two Little Boys. For his musical efforts, he was made a member of the Order of the British Empire, received numerous honorary degrees, and in 2008, he was inducted into the ARIA Hall of Fame. So, by all accounts, he had a pretty solid, respectable career. Much like disgraced all-around entertainer Bill Cosby, Ralph's true nature would come to light later in life. Ralph's first trouble started in March of 2013 when he was arrested during a police investigation called Operation U-Tree. It targeted sexual crimes of the past. Ralph was arrested again in August 2013 and charged with nine counts of indecent assault going all the way back to the 1980s, along with having photos of underage girls on his computer in 2012. Once he was convicted of some of the charges and sentenced to five years in jail, he not only had a lot of the honors given to him stripped away from him, but the ARIA Hall of Fame threw him out of their hall. To date, Ralph and maybe Bill Cosby are the only people that I know of who have been thrown out of a Hall of Fame for something that they've done. Cosby having been thrown out of the Television Hall of Fame. O.J. Simpson never been thrown out of the Football Hall of Fame. Go figure. The disgraced entertainer Ralph Harris, inducted into the ARIA Hall of Fame in 2008 and thrown out of the ARIA Hall of Fame in 2014. And like I said before, we will put Timey Kangaroo Down, Sport, and Two Little Boys into the podcast playlist, the link to which is in the show notes. The Music Halls of Fame podcast is part of the Music History Today network, which can be found under Music History Today on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, or wherever you get your podcast from, and also on our YouTube page under Music History Today. Thank you very much for listening.